G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, the last few days I've been working on replacing those two change gears in the lathe that got damaged through my carelessness. And uh, yeah, there were two damaged, not one. When the one went, it took out the other one. Well, it knocked it around badly enough that I didn't want to reuse it because, you know, if you've got part teeth there, um, even if it's three quarters of a tooth, it's still putting undue pressure on the other tooth and eventually it's going to fail. So I've made up two new change gears and you can see here the, uh, the work area, the Chinese laid over here, which has got the, um, the gear cutting uh, set up on it. And I've got my laptop computer here because this time around I used the USB microscope, which you might be able to see uh, up here, uh, to do the indexing and it worked absolutely fantastically. It was so good. It was so much better than a pointer. It just wasn't funny and accuracy was whew, fantastic. Can't recommend, it, can't recommend it highly enough. Indexing work, you, you pump up that one mil line to about 10 mil, you know, you got oh, no problem at all. Fantastic. Did I say it's fantastic? Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, and of course I used the old Shawman over here uh, to face up the gear blanks and do some of the other work uh, so I didn't have to pull the, the jig off of the uh, Chinese lathe. So all in all, it worked out pretty good. I didn't actually video the uh, gear cutting because I was just too busy. It's just too distracting and... Uh, You've seen it in some of my old VGA movies where I show you how you can cut cut gears. So in this case, no, I didn't do it. But I'll show you what we've started with and what we've finished with. Well, here's the two gears that I had to replace. This is the aluminium one, which I don't know if it's showing up very well, but you can see the teeth are mangled there and torn around there. Same there, it's still chewed up. And on this one, even though it looks okay, you've got chips there. And how it's coming up, chips there and there and there, 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 all through there, all through there. So the you know the refuse has fed itself through the gears and the well, wool, I mean you could use that but I wouldn't want it because it's only going to chew up the other gear over time and as I said you've only got part teeth there I mean you've probably got four fish of the teeth on most of them but it's still not ideal particularly if you're using a softer metal I mean this is cast iron this is aluminium and to do the, the new make the new replacements I used aluminium and I used some brass and I'll show you there I'll show you the new ones okay well here's the Here's the new ones, and they didn't turn out too badly. For a homemade on a lathe with no dividing head or rotary table, all done with a pie chart, computer generated pie chart, well, which you can download, which you can print off the internet as well, and uh, involute gear cutter and a lathe with a vertical mill slide. It just shows you, you know, you can do this. If I can do it, you can do it, and yeah, those gears are great. No problem whatsoever. So now it's just a matter of put it back together and uh, see how uh, it all goes. It should be quite all right. This brass gear will be better uh, than having all alloy, I think. Um, this is the main primary driving gear uh, for forward um, right hand feed, so that'll get a lot of wear and tear. But overall, yeah. You know, cool bananas, eh? Okay, we'll move on. All right, this is the indexing disc. That's a 71 tooth one, that one. And the other one was a 60. So I used this old one. I've done a 60 before, so coming up. Yeah, so that's an old one I did. So I reuse that. And this one's a 71, which I normally keep them. Um, this is just, as I said, you print off the pie chart from the internet. I've got the link in the uh, description and you just glue it onto a bit of suitable cardboard. Dry red, traditional dry red wine cask in this case. So not only do you get to make a gear, you get to drink the contents of the cask as well. <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, so that's your indexing um, disk. And that's all you need. And your gear goes on here, on the bottom. Well, your gear blank. And you just work your way around the disk and cut it with the uh, fly cutter or your uh, involute gear cutter. So we'll look at the lathe and just you can see again how it all fits together. So here you have it. It's just a vertical mill slide on the cross slide, a bottom support, a top support which is also a clamp, your gear holding apparatus, which basically just goes in here. And so your gear blanks there, your involute gear cutter or your fly cutter is there on the spindle, your referencing is up the top. And you just feed the set depth while driving in the, the cross slide um, to get the right depth of the uh, tooth space. And once you've got it set, you lock your, carri you lock your um, cross slide. You lock your carriage, of course, at centre point on the blank. Then you just feed the, uh, the blank through the cutter, bring it back up to the indexing point, and uh, unloop the clamp, turn the indexing disc to the next position, clamp it up, bound to the cutter, just keep repeating that and you just cut your gears. It's a piece of cake, you know, anybody could do this. You know, you don't need any fancy gear at all, really. All you, need, you do need a vertical mill slide, but you can't do without that. And, uh, you know, I, I thought long and hard about this when I was trying to figure out how I could cut gears on a lathe without having a mill or anything, you know. And after a few, few beers and a bit of, uh, Head scratching, yeah, come up with this idea. Works great. So, uh, that's all you need. And uh, of course, now with the USB microscope, the indexing is no problem at all. Absolute piece of cake. And uh, on the left here, we've got the computer. I'll spin this pan around, and you can just see there's the laptop. And I just do the indexing, it just feeds the it's not set up at the moment, but just, you can just see the line of the indexing, indexing line of the disc, which is magnified enormously, and you just put it between those two sticky notes and cut your tooth space and then rotate it until the next one in the tooth, in the, um, the space. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. A blind man could do it almost. Okay, so that's that. Right, well here's a look at it with the train assembled. These two gears we just made up. This is homemade, that's homemade, that's all that machined, you know. These are only two original gears left. This one's actually been on the machine for 10 years. Aluminium. It's the first gear I ever made and despite all this carnage that's happened over the years it's still going. It's unbelievable. But it just shows you how tough aluminium is. Um, you know, it's pretty strong stuff if you treat it right, but of course they don't like being meshed while things are in motion, but um, yeah, the reverse tumble on this just is a rocker, rocker arrangement. Something is all of it, you know, they're all much the same principle and it just clicks in. But in the so the brass gear gets to do most of the work and uh, you've got a steel gear on the on the spindle. I mean this is the hardest, these are the three hardest working gears for sure for the time that you get down the train a bit. Um, a lot of the shock loading has been smoothed out a bit but uh, anyway we'll get it back together. Sorry about the uh, lawn mowers in the background but it is Saturday and trying to film on Saturday either get lawnmowers, barking dogs, screaming kids, noisy cars, helicopters or jets going over and yeah well we'll have a bit of lathe noise instead. <laughs> yeah we look pretty good, pretty good. Yep, that would do the job very nicely. So uh, Right, that's it. Moving right along. A 
vibration, no shake, everything's smooth. If those gears weren't perfectly round, that'd be jazzing around like crazy. So, yeah, accuracy, great, perfect. So there you go, it just shows you that you don't need fancy equipment to do a lot of this work. All you need is common sense, take your time, be accurate. And I mean, we did all this with vertical mill slide, right angle bracket, a locking clamp, a spindle, a reference disc made from a pie chart. Well, you know, you could use a fly cutter or I use an in the loop because it's faster, it cuts quicker. But I mean, you can do these things, you know. If I can do it, you can do it. It's as simple as that. You don't have to be a genius. And uh, yeah, you know, well, anybody can uh, cut gears if they just sit down and uh, have a go. Okay, well that's it for me. I'm going to sit down and have a, have a bite of lunch and probably a beer. So, okay, I'll see you next time. Cheers.